You know which song I like by Frank Zappa? The one that goes blah blue blee blue blah blue blee blue blah 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 Two zero one two zero nine nine three six eight. So I'm reading Entertainment Weekly as I always do. That's right. It is the wind down rant, the final sixth. And I'm gonna say I played one, two, three. How many records did I play tonight? Four? I think I played four. So anyway, I'm reading Entertainment Weekly as I do, and I get a, uh, a, a text message from uh, comedian Paul F. Tompkins, who tells me, check out Stephen King's column in this week's Entertainment Weekly. So I quickly grab my copy. And I go right to the end. And I pull the column out. Stephen King has a column called The Pop of King. Which uh, is a uh, fun little thing because uh, Michael Jackson calls himself the King of Pop. So this column is called Cool in the Gang, but not K Cool in the Gang. K O O L. It's C O O L. And Stephen King says After exhaustive research, 20 minutes at least, I can only find two adjectives in the English language that cannot be modified. One is unique. You can't say something that is totally unique or even very unique. Either a thing is unique or it isn't. Like the farmer in the Dell's cheese, unique stands alone. What do I mean? This guy's a this guy's a writer, and that's what he came up with. Farmer in the Dell. This is also true of cool. Ugh. Get ready. You really might want to get ready for this one. It's one of our longest-running slang terms. Wikipedia says the concept may date back to Aristotle. Could be, but today's usage seems to have originated with the rhythm and blues hipsters who learned their chops in the 1930s and 40s. You can find definitions in various slang dictionaries, but the meaning of cool is beyond definition. And, and as I said, beyond modification. It just is, man. We're not there yet. The car is not even warmed up yet. It's a cold day. I went out and started it. Heat's not even... Uh, we're not, we're, we'll be going 70 miles an hour soon in this car. We're not, even, we're not even in the car yet. It's warming up in the driveway on a cold morning. Lots of people don't understand that because they're not cool. Your Uncle Stevie is cool, however. Ugh. Never refer to yourself as Uncle Anything. And I'm sure he's going to use Thang instead of Thing in here at some point. I, will, I, would, I would put money on it. Your Uncle Stevie is cool, however, he says it with all appropriate modesty, and has been since he ditched his first pair of school corduroys, husky boys size from the Sears catalog, and, oh God, how square, with cuffs. What? Who, who's this aimed at? What is this, uh, Saturday Evening Post? What's he talking? Sears Catalog. Right there, mentioning the Sears Catalog, he lost 95% of Entertainment Weekly's readers. A leather jacket and a scuffed pair of boots with elastic sides and pointed toes. Note, many kinds of boots come with square toes, but they are not cool. 
Again, we're not even started yet on this article. Boots with square toes are and always will be called country blank kickers. Yuck. Now look, we all read EW religiously, and we know about hot male hotties, female hotties. Oh, do you ever want? Do you want to hear this guy use the word hotties? Oh. Guy looks like the plant in uh, Little Shop of Horrors. That's actually what his face looks like. In a weird way, to me at least. He looks like that plant. Who's hot and who's not? But I'm here to tell you that hot doesn't matter. Hot is for square bears weighted down with earthly cares. Yes, author Stephen King. Square bears weighted down with earthly cares. What matters is cool. Here we go. You know, like Steve McQueen in The Magnificent Seven. Or Natalie Wood starting the hot rod race in Rebel Without a Cause. Take, for instance, Bruce Springsteen's new album, Magic. It's good, but not cool. Then there's John Fogarty's latest. It's not as good as Springsteen's disc, but it is cool. Especially Creedence's song. It might have something to do with the way that Fogarty says Creedence. It's some strange and exotic pronunciation, as if you learn the word in Lithuanian. Here's another example. Michael Clayton. Great film, but not cool. Although Tom Wilkinson, who plays a so crazy he's sane lawyer, is cool in it. George Clooney gives a heck of a performance in the movie, but he's not a bit cool. Not square, I won't go that far, but cool, no. Sorry. Seems like somebody left part of his uh, uh, brains back on that road where he got hit by the car. This guy's insane. I'll write a thing about insane. Stephen King, he's insane. He's not cool, not talented, but he's insane. On the other hand, Jodie Foster's cool in The Brave One. Her defining moment of cool comes late in the film when she snarls, I want my dog back. What is she, uh, Harrison Ford? I want my dog back. In this year's other vigilante movie, the wonderfully bloodthirsty Death Sentence, Kevin Bacon isn't cool, but John Goodman, as a sleazy gun dealer, is. In this case, I know exactly why. It's his glasses. In 310 to Yuma, it's the hat. Russell Crowe is cool because of the hat. But here's the thing. You or I could wear that hat and not be cool. It's Russell Crowe under the hat that makes it cool, just as it's John Goodman's face behind the glasses. Are, actors always, are any actors always cool, even in bad movies? I'd say there are at least four. Jack Nicholson, Holly Hunter, Holly Hunter, Morgan Freeman, and the late John Cassavetes. It's worth noting that Cassavetes directed many movies, and none were cool. Best consistently non-cool male actor, Tom Hanks. Best consistently non-cool female actor, Charlize Theron. What? What is this guy talking about? Cool. Cool. Not cool? Guy's not cool? Tom Hanks isn't cool? You didn't see Joe vs. Volcano? You didn't see the burbs? On TV, Prison Break isn't very good, but it has stayed cool. And the just concluded season of Damages was one bad refrigerator. Ugh. Get it? Because refrigerators keep things cool. Friday Night Lights, good, but not cool. Because it tries too hard to be cool. Battlestar Galactica was cool. Last season started out cool, then warmed up. It may regain its coolness factor, but probably not. That rarely happens. 
So this guy is just You can you can't you just picture him like realizing he forgot to write a column? It's like, oh no. Whoops. I gotta have this thing in, thing in by three o'clock today. What time is it? Two forty two? And his wife's like, just tell them you didn't get it done. Just tell them, ask them for an extension. I'll do this. Get out of my way. I have 18 minutes. I can do it. Lost has stayed cool because it's so weird. American Idol was never cool. It says sad things about the coolness quotient of our young people that any of them like this warmed over Las Vegas meatloaf. Whoa. Going after American Idol. I don't know. Mystery suspense writer Michael Connolly is cool. So is George Pelicanos. Elmore Leonard, the true daddy cool of American letters, is chillier than your freezer's ice cube dispenser. Robert Parker used to be cool, but isn't anymore. Did a Patricia Cornwell. James Patterson never was never will be gotta say it Nora Roberts is cool I don't make the news honey I just report it I mean this is just you he he realizes that this is just that he's just naming names and and probably alternating between cool all right I said that uh, Michael Collins was not cool let me what should I put is not cool so let me put Tom Wilkinson in there as cool like just there's no rhyme or reason to the coolness thing. Really? Oh, there's not? You sure? Look at politicians, the ultimate entertainers. Barack Obama is cool. Hillary Clinton, who will probably win the Democratic Party's nomination to run for president, is not. On the other side, well, it's hard to be a Republican and be cool, which I disagree with wholeheartedly. Fred, he better not rip Fred Thompson in here. It's almost an oxymoron, but John McCain is cool. And of course, Bob Dole, very cool. What? Remember, cool is not a way of life, it's a state of being. Like your height, I can't help being 6'3", and I can't help being cool. Same way Michael Crichton can't help being 6'9", and not cool. One of the other things Stephen King can't help is being talentless, apparently. Now, at a point... At point, you stop writing. This is not, this is not some. Uh, this is not some lifelong mission that you say when it's over. It might be time for uh, for someone to say it's over on this guy. It's over. Put uh, put the typewriter away. It's over. Get this out of here. <laughs> 